Let's travel to distant worlds. Let's create a new dimension in Minecraft. All right, we find ourselves back in Intelligent Ones 1. In this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom dimension to Minecraft. Now, this time, we're actually going to do it with JSON files because that's very, very much easier than doing it in any way in the code. But let's just do it. So inside of the world package, we're going to create a new package called the dimension package. And inside of there, we're going to need one class, the mod dimensions class. And I'm going to copy over the contents because they are very easy to understand. We have three fields and one register method. You can see the first field is a registry key of dimension options. This is basically the settings that the dimension has. Then we have a registry key of world. This is the actual key that is going to be used to basically say, hey, in what dimension are we in? This is going to be used shortly inside of the teleporter because we're going to basically make our dice block the teleportation, so to speak. And then we have the registry key of dimension type. This is just to specify a particular type. And this here and this here are also the names of the actual JSON files that we're going to need. And those have to be placed in the data folder under tutorial mod. Basically copy over those folders here, making sure that those are written correctly, right? So you can see that this is dimension and dimension type. In the dimension, we have the kg dim and the kg dim type here. And you can see that the type here refers to this type of course. Those two JSON files, I once again can only advocate for the missold GitHub IO dimension and the dimension type generators here, making sure that you're on 117, very important. And here you can basically just put everything in here and just make it so that it basically is whatever you would want to getting your dimension exactly right. That can definitely be very challenging, but in this case, you have almost everything in here and it should at least help you to do this. All right, switching back to IntelliJ, we now have everything in here. Let's actually call the mod dimensions as well. We have to call this at the very bottom here. So mod dimensions dot register. This once again, just makes sure that the static initializers or the static fields are sort of initialized in general. And once we have actually done this, we now of course need a way to go into that. And what we're gonna do is we're going to basically use the dice block that we've made. So we actually need to make a custom class for this. We're gonna make a new class called dice block. And this is going to extend the block class, of course. And then we're just going to do this one right here. There you go. And then instead of making the dice block a normal dice, we're actually going to make this a dice block. So this is very important that we change this. And then inside of here, we're going to make some interesting changes. We're going to have a static method and we're going to overwrite the on use method. I'm going to copy this over and explain in just a moment. Once again, I want to give credit where credit is due. The code here is modified from the daylight dimension uh, GitHub repository here from Dunkmania 101. So make sure to think about this because once again, this code is actually distributed just like my code under the MIT license. So make sure that you follow everything there. License notice is of course also available in the GitHub repository as well. So keep that in mind. And also thank you very much for this link of this one is of course also in the description below. All right, so let's step through this. First of all, okay, we're, we can't be on the client, fair enough. And then we can't be sneaking. Okay, so we're right clicking this block. And we can't be on the client and we're sneaking. So everything here happens on the server. We're then getting the server and making sure that it's not null. Fair enough. Then we're casting the player into the server player. And just in case we're basically looking that it actually is a server player entity. And then this if statement is the interesting thing because here we're basically sort of creating a branch that basically says, hey, if we're in our custom dimension, then where we want to end up is in the overworld. And if we are not in the custom dimension, then what we assume is we're on the overworld and we want to get to the new dimension. Now that's actually really interesting because this is still called daylight world. That's of course not quite right. Let's call this KGD, KG dim. There you go. And the idea here is simply that when you are inside of the overworld, we want to teleport to the custom dimension. If we're in the custom dimension, we want to go to the overworld. That's literally all that this really says. Down here, when we actually teleport into the custom dimension for the first time, what we want to see is that we basically get the destination of where we want to end up in. And then we're going to say, hey, if there is in a 10 by 10 by 10 cube, if there is anywhere where there is a dice block, we don't have to set another dice block. The dice block here is, of course, the teleporter. And that's the sort of idea. So if we find if we don't find in a 10 by 10 by 10 radius, a dice block, we're going to generate it. Otherwise, we were not generated. So that's generally the idea here server-player.teleport is called up there and down here, literally just teleports the player to the new dimension. 
And then the get destination method is down here, which is also really funny. The, the thing here, we can also just say this like is in dimension method, just recall, rename this. And you can see that this is, first of all, starts at Y level 61, just so that we have a baseline. Now, this is the case because the daylight dimension from which this code is taken is a flat land or a flat world, because we have normal world generation. This could be, you know, modified in a, in a few ways as well. Some Java knowledge there is, of course, very much helpful. But otherwise, we're basically just going to check whether or not we can actually spawn here. So you can see we're just continuously going up until two blocks of air are found and where you can basically, in theory, put water in. So this means that we're not standing in any type of block here. So and then and then we're basically setting that as the destination position. And once that is done, we can basically return that position to where we want to spawn. Right, the teleportation here is okay, it's fine and it works. However, what I do want to say next tutorial, I will actually show you how to make a custom portal as well, which is going to be a bit more reliable. So keep that in mind as well. But that is actually all that we need. So let's see if it works. Now, if you're creating a new world or you're going into a old world, you're going to be greeted by something like this, the experimental settings. Uh, you will simply have to say, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I will at the end of this video present a mod that you can basically relate to your users that might help with that because that's going to basically just make it so that this doesn't show anymore and let's just set down the dice block and right click it and you can see there i am in the new world now where's the dice block is actually there in the bottom that's totally fine i can go back here and i can go back there as again and there we are so now of course this is going to look very similar to just the overworld because well i mean it just is the normal generation but it is the other dimension you can see right here tutorial mod kg dim we are actually in the another dimension. Right, and this is the mod I was talking about, right? This is the disable custom worlds advice mod. You can basically just tell your users, you know, or, you know, just link this in your mod page, basically, hey, it's very much advice to take this because this can get very, very annoying. Right, but that would pretty much be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.